There really is nothing like God's love. It never ends. In the Bible, a follower of Jesus named Paul wrote that nothing in all of creation can ever separate us from the love of God. In fact, God's love is so powerful that it should make us want to respond by loving Him and loving other people. One response to God's love is worshiping and praising Him together. So join me as we sing This Is Living. Waking up knowing there's a reason All my dreams come alive Life is for living with you I've made my decision You lift me up, fill my eyes with wonder For every young in your love This freedom's untainted With you, no moment is wasted Nothing like living with you This life you created I choose game time and today we are playing two seconds or else a game where we have two seconds to name something we love with whatever letter we get or we get smacked in the head with these blow up hammers ah! ready to see how well our contestants can name things dogs yeah she has a dog i do have That's a dog true. i love dogs g two yeah. <laughs> God! You could have said God! Oh my God! I could have said God. <laughs> 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 no! <laughs> you had an option. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> All right, get in there, Liz. Okay, I accept that. <laughs> A, two, apples. One. Good. I mean, she likes apples. I do. <laughs> she <Johnny>? likes apples. <laughs> you, two, Umbrellas. 
<laughs> I like you that. You love umbrellas? I'm not, I love not getting wet. <laughs> umbrellas. It's true. I mean, everyone loves umbrellas. <laughs> This game is not about what we love at all. It is. I love not getting wet. No, it's not. I love not getting wet in the rain. No, it's not. <laughs> X. Xylophones. You don't love xylophones. <laughs> Why? I love xylophones. Mira, she does it. <laughs> musical instrument. Oh yeah. Name one note. Name one xylophone. <laughs> Name one xylophone. Three. Name one xylophone. Two. One. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! Two, two, Girl, uh, <laughs> okay. Embarrassing. Canola. <laughs> <laughs> uh, My first thought was quail. Queso. <laughs> but I don't love quails, I could care less. Queso. Ooh, I, I do love queso. Queso. Mm -hmm. Queso's a good one. I just can't think that fast. Hey. Caitlin, my sister. <laughs> You do have a yeah. sister. I do. <laughs> you do have a sister. So bad, I thought yeah. there were pre into swing. I felt the pre into swing coming in. <laughs> it was there. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. We hope you had fun with the game. But don't worry, there's plenty of fun left for today. So stay tuned. Our game today was all about things that we love. I bet if we took some time, we'd all have a long list of things we love. We use the word love for a lot of different things, and there are so many different ways we can show that love. But did you know that God, the king of everything, loves us? In fact, he doesn't make us do anything to earn that love either. But how do we know that God loves us? Well, our big idea today is, how do we know that God loves us? We can know that God loves us because he gave us Jesus to forgive the sins of the world. God's love for people is shown to us all throughout the Bible. God loved Adam and Eve even after they sinned, and he made a promise to save people through the Messiah. God's faithful love was with his people, Israel, even when they disobeyed and turned away from him. Eventually, God's son, Jesus, the Messiah, was born to forgive the sins of the world. In our Bible story, we will be learning even more about God's love and how we can show that love to other people. What is love? People have different ideas about what love is. The Bible says God is love. He loves people, all people. And because God loves us, we can love others. Paul, a follower of Jesus, wrote a letter to the church in Corinth. Paul told the Corinthians that God gives believers spiritual gifts, special abilities to help people and build up the church. Paul said that the greatest spiritual gift is love. This is what Paul wrote about love. If I speak different languages but don't have love, what good is it? I'm just making noise, like a loud gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and speak God's truth, or if I understand and know all things, or if I have great faith but do not have love, then I am nothing. If I am generous and give away all my possessions but do not have love, I gain nothing. Then Paul described what love is like. He wrote, Love is patient, and love is kind. Love does not envy. It is not boastful or arrogant. Love is not rude or self-seeking. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness. It rejoices in the truth. Love does not give up, is always trusting, is always hoping, and never quits. God's gift of love is unlike other spiritual gifts because it never ends. Gifts like prophecies and speaking in tongues and knowledge will one day end. 
Love never ends. One day we will see God face to face and we will know Him perfectly. These things will remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God is love, and God loves all people. He calls everyone who trusts in Jesus to love him and love others. In our story, Paul wrote to the Corinthians about love. He said that without love, we are nothing. Even if we try to do great things for God, if we don't have love, it doesn't matter. Without love, we aren't living out our purpose. To help us understand this more, we're going to need a sponge and some water. This sponge serves a purpose. Once it soaks up the water, you can squeeze to release the liquid into a cup. Without love, we aren't living out the purpose that God has created for us. It's like this sponge that isn't serving its purpose. Love is the greatest gift that God gives us. He even loves us when we disobey and we have our backs turned to Him. We can know that God loves us because He sent Jesus to forgive the sins of the world. God shows us through His Word what real love looks like. When we truly love someone, we should want what is best for them. We should think of them as more important than ourselves. This isn't always easy to do, but the good news is God helps us love others in the way that He loves us. We won't always do this perfectly, but as we follow Jesus and we grow in our faith, He changes our hearts to love like He does. He gives us the Holy Spirit living inside of us to enable us to love unconditionally. Go ahead and close your time by reading scripture and praying together as a family. Our story can be found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 3 through 7. Then spend some time in prayer, asking for the Holy Spirit to strengthen you so you may love with peace, patience, kindness, and care towards someone who needs it, like Christ has done for us. Thanks for watching, everyone. Come back next week to hear how the people rejected Jesus.